In this video, I will show you five JavaScript topics that you should learn in order to go advanced with Google Tag Manager. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you're new here, I teach people how to work with GTM and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with Google Tag Manager, consider subscribing. Even though it is fairly easy to install your first tag with Google Tag Manager, things get complex pretty soon. And the more you work with Google Tag Manager, the more you will notice the need of some JavaScript knowledge. There are many JavaScript topics that are useful for Google Tag Manager, but in this video, I have picked five that I think you should start learning first. So let's take a look. So the first topic that you should learn, or actually maybe I should call it even the topic number zero, because this is the very fundamental stuff that every JavaScript course for beginners starts with. And that is the basic syntax. You will need to know what variables are, how to define them, how to assign values to them, how to do some actions with them. For example, here we have one variable, which is A and its value equals to 12. Then we have variable B and the variable C is the sum of the first two variables. So this is one of the things that you have to learn in order to move forward with JavaScript. However, keep in mind one thing that if you're looking for some tutorials about JavaScript right now, you will see some different things. And one of the differences that you will notice is that the developers who wrote those guides, they are usually not using var. They are using things like let or const. Now, the reason why this happens is that there are different versions of JavaScript. There are older versions and there are newer versions. For example, this version of JavaScript is called ECMAScript 5, while this one is called ECMAScript 6. Const, let, var are not the only differences between ECMAScript 5 and 6. There are many more. But what you need to keep in mind in the context of Google Tag Manager is that some parts of Google Tag Manager support only ECMAScript 5. So for example, custom HTML tag, custom JavaScript variable, they support only ECMAScript 5. So if you have a tag that uses var, for example, then it will work just fine. However, there is one more thing in ECMAScript 6, which is called arrow function expressions, and it is visible right here. And this part will not be supported by Google Tag Manager. You know what? Let's take a look. Let's have a tag that has an unsupported syntax from ECMAScript 6. I will click save and I will try to preview the container and then I will get the error that I'm now trying to use certain syntax that belongs to the ECMAScript 2015, which is in other words, ECMAScript 6. So this is not supported in custom HTML tag. And you should Google how to rewrite this kind of function syntax to the old school function expression. Or if down the road, you're still not very confident, you could ask a developer to do that. On the other hand, some parts of Google Tag Manager support ECMAScript 6 as well. And that part is called templates. So for example, here, I will go to templates, I already have added some templates right here. So let's say that I will open this one. And here in the code, you will notice that we have things like const, we have arrow functions. So as you can see, at least some parts of ECMAScript 6, or also known as ECMAScript 2015, they are supported in the custom tag templates, but they are still not supported in custom HTML tags or custom JavaScript variables, at least as of the moment of recording this video. Then the next topic that you should learn is data types and structural types. When you start learning about variables and about the values that you can assign to those variables, you will have to deal with different types of data that you can assign to them. For example, you can add strings, which is a text. You can add numbers. You can add booleans, which is true, false. And there are some other types as well. Also, there are more complex structural types that could contain more data points. And that's where things like objects and arrays join the game. For example, here I can declare a new variable, which is var a, and let's say that its value will be two. Now, if I click a, it will return a value two. But when it comes to more complex data structures, it can be something like this. Let's say that I will have a variable that will be called product categories, and then the values will be stored in an array. Array basically is a list of various values or other objects or even other arrays. So for example, it can be like this. I have, let's say, shoes, then another string will be apparel, then can be something like hats or something like that. These obviously are just examples. But now if I define this variable, and now I try to access that variable, I have three items right here. And if I want to access, let's say the second item right here, I would do like that I would enter one because in JavaScript, 
index starts from zero. So this is the zeroth item, the first item, and the second item. And right now I get the apparel. By learning about data structures, you will be able to understand better how data layer works as well. Because basically data layer on your website is an array. And you or your developers or I don't know, some plugins can add some additional data to that array. Also, I forgot to mention that I have picked a bunch of useful learning resources and you will find them below the video. All those resources are related to all the topics that I will mention in this video. Then another group of topics that you should learn is functions and scope. Functions basically are pieces of code that you can use in order to complete certain tasks. And in fact, the best example would be to just take a look at one of the code snippets that are quite popular if you are trying to use them for Vimeo video tracking on your website. So if you have some embedded Vimeo video player on your website and you want to track video interactions, then you would need to implement this kind of code in your Google Tag Manager container. And if you take a closer look at that code, you will notice a bunch of functions. For example, this function is responsible for initializing a lot of stuff. Then we have another function which will update the URL of the video player. Then we have another function which handles various messages received from the video player. And there are more functions that are responsible for certain tasks. So as you can see, each function serves a certain purpose in the context of the video player tracking. Also, if we take a look at the custom JavaScript variable, which is also used in this uh, setup, this is also using a function because every custom JavaScript variable in Google Tag Manager requires two things. It must be an anonymous function. So there is no name in the function. While for example, we have function name here and function name here when it comes to custom HTML tag. So we have an anonymous function and then this function also must return some value. So by spending more time to learn functions, you will get more familiar with custom JavaScript variable and with custom HTML tags. Also, if we take one more look at the custom HTML tags code, you will also see things like try catch. So this is also quite popular in the context of Google Tag Manager. Also, we have a lot of if statements, or in other words, you can instruct your functions or basically your code to do something if something else happens. So definitely take a look at if statements as well. And then when it comes to working with functions, you cannot avoid a thing called scope. So in a nutshell, scope defines the accessibility of the variable. So for example, here we have one function and in that function, there is a variable which is defined and its name is player. So if some part of the code in this function wants to access that player, it will be able to do that. But any other function, for example, this one will not be able to access that player because it is out of scope. But this is a very oversimplified example. And if you want to learn more, you will have to dig deeper on your own. And I will post some resources below the video. Then the other topic that you should definitely learn is string methods. String, as I've said before, is a text and you can manipulate that text or extract certain part of the text with the help of JavaScript. There are various string methods and you will find the list of them below the video, but let's take a look at one example. Let's say that I have a variable that is called product category and that value is available in the data layer. And let's say that this value is a string, but for some reason, because of the structural data in the database, products can be added to several categories at the same time. And the first one is the most important one, or let's say the primary category. So let's say that the value of the product category of product X is shoes, men, and large or whatever, something like that. So now let's say that I want to extract only the first category, which is shoes. I don't care about the second or the third or whatever the other category is in this value. So one of the ways how you can do that is with string methods. So what we could do is that we could enter product category, then use a string method, which is called split. And we can split these values with a separator. And in this case, a separator is slash. So I will separate it with the slash and then I will get an array. And in this array, I want to access the first item of which index is zero. So my final solution would be this. And here is how you can access the first category and extract that from the string. And as I've said, there are many more methods that you can use. So take a look at them and maybe you will find something valuable to your needs. Then another topic that is more complex compared to the previous ones, but this is definitely something that is a must for Google Tag Manager user. And those things are called loops and array methods. 
So let's take a look at one example. Obviously, I will not be diving deeper into that because this topic is very extensive, but I at least want to show you a problem. And the solution to that is loops and some array methods. So let's imagine that I have certain array in the data layer and that array is called products. And here I have two products. A developer added some data layer code and that code pushed the information to the data layer. And here are two products. Each product contains the name, ID and the price. So I could reuse this information and send it to some marketing tools or some analytics tools that I use. But here's the problem. Usually those third party tools don't accept things like currency signs and the price. So you should somehow get rid of that. And there are mainly two options. The first one is to ask a developer to get rid of that. And that is definitely a viable solution. But the other one could be to learn more about loops and some array methods that would allow you to iterate through each item in the array, in this case, each product, and then the loop will automatically do that. And based on your instructions, the loop can remove these dollar signs or do anything else that you want. For example, maybe you want to extract certain parameters. Maybe you want to add certain parameters to each product that can be done with loops and certain array methods. So in, in actual, what loop does is based on your instructions, it will iterate through each product or each member of the array, and then it will do something based on your instructions. So for example, in this case, it would make sense to remove the dollar sign at the beginning from every price of every product. And there are many array methods at your disposal, but these are the most commonly used from what I have seen. So you should definitely take a look into the push method. This is the same method that is used in the data layer. Data layer dot push is the array method. Then we have dot pop, find method, slice, map for each. Basically for each in this case is an alternative to the usual for loop, then includes, filter, reduce. In this video, I will not be explaining what each of these methods do, but you should definitely take a look at them and learn more by checking the description of this video. And then the final topic that I wanted to mention in this video is the document object model, also known as the DOM. So in a nutshell, DOM allows you to manipulate or to get certain values from the website with the help of JavaScript. When you try to open a certain website, your browser downloads an HTML file from that website's server. And then the browser generates the view that you see right here. And this is happening thanks to technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, what happens next is that also a thing called DOM is built as well. So the DOM in this case is like a dynamic representation of what was written in the HTML file. So in other words, thanks to the DOM, you can dynamically access certain elements on a page or you can add additional elements on a page. For example, you can change the color of the button if you want. And also you can listen to the events that are happening in the DOM. So for example, if the visitor hovers a mouse on a certain element, you can listen to that and you can get data about that thanks to the DOM events. So basically all the auto event listening stuff in Google Tag Manager, like link click triggers, all element click triggers and some other triggers, they are working because of the things called DOM events. Because you can add some additional listeners that will be looking for certain interactions on the page and then you can do something with the data that comes back from those listeners. Below this video, you will find a link to my blog post about a variable which is called DOM element. So Google Tag Manager already has some features that allow you to access elements on a page and get certain values from them. Also in this blog post, I give some additional explanation on what the DOM is. So these were the five topics about JavaScript that I thought you should learn first if you want to apply that knowledge in Google Tag Manager. Obviously, there are many more topics, but I think that you should start with these five. So. I hope that you have now at least some direction of what to learn next. You will find all the mentioned resources below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tech Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.